We do have a few important news stories to get to on this episode of News Dump, but first, we have one of the funniest updates to one of the goofiest recurring characters to kick things off today, and we are, of course, talking about my pillow CEO Mike Lindell, who seems to continuously run into problems the second he attempts to somehow patch up his old ones. Oh no. Oh, I've done it again. They got me dead to rights. <laughs> Uh, our most recent update regarding Mike Lindell was the launch of his anti-woke Amazon knockoff online store, The My Store. The My Store. Which he claims consists of a select number of items personally analyzed by his extensive team of seven or so people who are tasked with somehow confirming that all of the junk on that site is actually made in the USA, which is an obviously dubious claim on its own. Unfortunately for everyone that has been waiting with bated breath, Mike has not, unfortunately, has not updated his Mike's picks on the website. Well, you're going to need those tick pills year round. We're not settling enough of the blood clotting medicine for horses. <laughs> yeah, so his, his suggestions for purchase on the website, they're still meat sticks, tick removers, and also temporary teeth. I mean, these are all what we call in the business evergreen products. Yeah, these are never going out of style. These aren't seasonal items. When your teeth start falling out, you need Mike's uh, tooth gum stuff. Temporary teeth. It's, it's For like, when you're missing a tooth and you need a new one. You jam it up in there, you, you mold it yourself. It's like a cool piece of clay. You got a family photo at six and your tooth gets knocked out at four. You're going to need one of Mike's temporary teeth at five. Also, yeah, bizarre. He has two separate like animal blood clotting products. Well, you, you, you animals get blood clots. Yeah. And yeah. Who's laughing now? Well, not him. He's he's having a, a very serious conversation about every issue. Like we said before, he's a stinky boy. His teeth are falling out. He's got ticks all over him. <laughs> uh, but so yeah. yeah, the My Store is just one of many business ventures that Mike Lindell has embarked upon in the years since Donald Trump lost the 2020 election. And a lot of them have been either the cause of or solution to multiple lawsuits against him, which carry financial penalties that could eventually add up to well over a billion dollars. With a B, a billion dollars. The biggest lawsuits against Lindell uh, were initiated by Dominion Voting Systems and Smartmatic, but as you'll recall, there was another lawsuit filed against Mike Lindell as a result of his stolen election claims. A much smaller lawsuit, but one that will now bury Lindell even further in debt, just after he was allegedly able to find some extra cash, probably in a pillow, yeah. to continue. Oh, there it was, under one of my beautiful pillows. I get my money pillows mixed up with my my pillows. Yes. Found the money, and he was, he was able to continue running those ads on Fox News after they dropped him for not paying his bills, but he found the cash pillow, and everything's fine, and oh, geez. Ugh, another rake placed lovingly right in front of me. So we're, of course, talking about the lawsuit that was filed against him after Lindell issued... The Prove Mike Wrong Challenge during that cyber symposium event that he held a few years back in South Dakota. So it's beautifully egotistical to call it the Prove Me Wrong Challenge and then someone immediately doing that. They proved Mike wrong. Yeah, well, we are sure that you already remember the story, but before we get to the update, here's a very brief retelling of it. Mike Lindell offered a $5 million prize to anyone who could disprove his claims about manipulated voting machines in the 2020 election. A cyber forensics expert and self-proclaimed Trump voter named Robert Ziedman actually provided a 15-page report that detailed how inaccurate Lindell's claims were, despite Ziedman himself stating that he hoped the analysis would prove Lindell right. He's like, well, he actually has no uh, basis in reality here, but on the plus side, I get $5 million. Believe me, Mike, no one's as disappointed as me. Well, okay, you do owe me $5 million, so... No one's as disappointed as you, but trust me, I'm a close second. I did this for us. Yeah. If it had gone the other way, you your claims would have been legitimized. And can you really put a value on that? And well, you can. I guess it's $5 million. It's $5 million, and I would like that money. Please. please. So when he couldn't find anything that supported Lindell's claims, he submitted the report to Lindell uh, for his $5 million reward. And yeah, you know, Mike Lindell, he's a man of his word. I'm he's sure the check is in the mail. Uh, actually, I'm being pulled over by the FBI right now. I was on. I was actually on the way to the post office oh, geez. to get this check mailed out. I stopped for uh, some some uh, what's that? Uh, 
Culver's? Yeah. <laughs> I, still, I pulled it over for a little bit Delicious of Culver's. Delicious chicken sandwich at Culver's. You won't believe You the can't custard. get them in California, but believe me, so good. They don't sell custard like this anywhere else in the United States. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, I had the check, but uh, unfortunately it's in the possession of many FBI agents now. <laughs> So yes, obviously that $5 million never materialized, so Ziedman filed for arbitration under the contest rules. And last time we spoke about this, that panel agreed that Lindell <laughs> owed Ziedman the $5 million prize and ordered him to pay that prize. But Lindell still refused to pay. So here's the latest update because now a federal judge has gotten involved. Whew, here's the Associated Press. A federal judge on Wednesday affirmed a $5 million arbitration award against MyPillow chief executive Mike Lindell in favor of a software engineer who challenged data that Lindell said proves China interfered in the 2020 U.S. presidential election and tipped the outcome to Joe Biden. Lindell said he plans to appeal. Asked if he can afford to pay, he pointed out that the breach of contract lawsuit was against one of his companies, Lindell Management LLC, and not against him personally. Of course we're going to appeal it. This guy doesn't have a dime coming, Lindell said. A panel of three arbitrators last April unanimously ordered Lindell to pay Ziedman $5 million, concluding that he had satisfied the contest rules. <laughs> In Wednesday's ruling, U.S. District Judge John, John Thunheim expressed concern about how the panel interpreted what he called a poorly written contract. Oh, you don't say? <laughs> wow. Uh, but said courts have only limited authority to overrule arbitration awards. He ordered Lindell to pay up with interest within 30 days. Damn, that's a year of interest oh, too on top no. of it. <laughs> I'm ruined. So this is what happens when, when you when you you issue a, a challenge and you claim that you're going to back that up, but don't worry, that was actually just one of my many LLCs that issued that yeah. challenge, and not me personally. Issuing a five million dollar challenge—that's something you do when you're high on the horse, and it's or high on something, and it, yeah, and it's something that really comes to bite you in the ass when you're. Feeling low. It's so funny because, like, why five million in particular? Like, you could have just thrown out any number and people, like, yeah, a hundred thousand dollar award. If, if nothing else, Mike Lindell has true convictions. Yeah. He's not just some grifter. He is willing to torch his entire career, yeah. his business, his reputation, just everything he worked for his entire life and, for, for his God Emperor, President Donald Trump. And the fact that the person who refuted all of his claims was a Trump supporter is just, it just adds so much delicious spice to the story. So yeah, this is what appears to be the first ruling that forces Lindell to actually hand over some cash. It's a far cry from the billions in damages that he's facing down the road, but the fact that he's sweating over f just, just $5 million yeah. is a very clear sign that this former billionaire is completely broke because, directly because, of his allegiance to Donald Trump. Yeah, it was last September or October that his legal team that was representing him in the other lawsuits just dropped him as a client because he couldn't pay his bills. Yeah, it is what, like, the f this guy, how do you make that much money? Billions on Disappear. pillows. Yeah, but then 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 to spend it all. Yeah, you like, step one is making the money, and I'm like, how does that work? That seems impossible. A lot and then of people, step two, pay, a lot of patriots buying many pillows. Step two, it's like, how do you lose all that in, like, Three got, years. Yeah, the losing part is crazy. The the I mean, a billion dollars is an astronomical amount of That's money. That's insane. But you got to think for patriots, uh, all these patriots who are like 70 years old, living in a, a 4,000 square foot McMansion, all their kids are gone. They don't visit. They've got to replace pillows in yeah. every single room of There's, that house uh, just in case. These empty nesters have a lot of space for pillows. Yes, uh, because that one time of the year where everyone puts aside their differences and comes back over, yeah. they're going to need a place to sleep, and mm -hmm. they're going to trick them into sleeping on a freedom pillow. Yeah. Whoa. Not so woke anymore. So that's, you know... Look at the tag on that pillow. I didn't think so. That's right. It's it's my pillow. And there's a crucifix buried inside of it, too. You don't like it? You go sleep on the fucking lawn, <laughs> you ungrateful son! <laughs> but yeah, so that's I didn't like, raise no communist! What's that? So that's like 20 pillows per, per house. So yeah. It, it adds up. Yeah. But also setting it on fire in just three years is actually it's pretty almost wild. more impressive. But now that we've got that out of the way, it's time to talk about something much more consequential than Mike Lindell being hoisted by his own petard. Because we are once again talking about America in decline. Since Roe v. Wade was overturned, we've seen abortion bans to varying degrees in multiple states across the country, with 14 states having outright bans, and many others limiting the window wherein abortion can actually be performed to the point where a woman might not even know she's actually pregnant before that window for a legal abortion has already closed. 
things will get worse, and a Republican takeover of the government will fast-track even more abortion bans and restrictions. But not to be outdone by everything else going on, Alabama has decided that frozen embryos used for in vitro fertilization, IVF, are actually children and have the same rights as children. Though anyone would- You drop a test tube, you've killed a million children. Yeah, th th as many people have argued online, the uh, very stark difference here is that embryos can be frozen and then used, yeah, yeah. Uh, whereas children and fetuses you, cannot. You can't put a, put a child in the freezer and save it for when you, you, you're ready for it. Yeah. Uh, so pretty big difference. Uh, also, this is insane, but this has caused multiple IVF clinics across the state of Alabama to immediately put a halt to helping women get pregnant. This is nothing to do with the abortion stuff. Yeah. I, IVF is for helping women get pregnant. Helping yeah. families bring more kids. Women who, in a lot of cases, can't get pregnant uh, through, through, traditional a, through means. other means. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, interesting that they would... Uh, and if you're yeah, do that. if you're confused by this, it all comes back to like uh, a lot of religious shit. But uh, so the people that are also confused by this are the lawmakers themselves, because it doesn't really seem as though they fully understand no. what they've done. No, this is IVF. That's women's business. I, just whatever. Baby stuff. Put it on the credit card. Baby stuff. Tell them it's illegal. All right, I've done my part. Off the CPAC. Now, to clarify, because this gets very dumb very quickly, IVF is used to help women who are having trouble getting pregnant to actually have kids, which you would assume would have the full support of not just everyone, but conservatives in particular. Uh -huh. It's an expensive as well as a physically and mentally exhausting process that doesn't always succeed. So you'd assume that anyone choosing to utilize IVF would really, really, really want to start a family. Mm -hmm. It's not something you do casually. Yeah. With this recent ruling, Republicans are actually working to prevent that from happening. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's such an insane ruling that even prominent members of the Republican Party are confused as to what's actually been done. Here is a brief clip of Senator Tommy Tuberville of Alabama, the state where this ruling took place, seemingly unaware of what the actual ramifications of this ruling are. Do you have a reaction to the Alabama Supreme Court ruling on the fact that embryos are children? Yeah, I was all for it. We need to have more kids. We need to have an opportunity to do that. And this, I thought this was the right thing to do. But IVF is used to have more children. And right now, IVF services are paused at some of the clinics in Alabama. Aren't you concerned that this could impact people who are trying to have kids? Well, that's for that's for another conversation. People need to have that. We need more kids. We need the people to, to have the opportunity to have kids. Senator, what do you say to the women right now in Alabama who no longer have access to IVF? Well, well, that's a hard one. It really is. This guy should have stuck to football. Yeah. What's even crazier is that this ruling was handed down after a few couples filed a lawsuit against a fertility clinic for accidentally destroying embryos. And they were probably heartbroken about this, but now because of their lawsuit and this ruling, they've essentially halted all in vitro fertilization within the state, which unless these couples are total sociopaths, it's probably not the outcome that they were hoping for. Great job. Yeah, so with more on this, here's NPR. The Alabama Supreme Court has ruled that frozen embryos can be considered children under state law. A decision critics said could have sweeping implications for fertility treatment in the state. The decision was issued in a pair of wrongful death cases brought by three couples who had frozen embryos destroyed in an accident at a fertility clinic. Justices, citing anti-abortion language in the Alabama Constitution, ruled that an 1872 state law allowing parents to sue over the death of a minor child applies to all unborn children, regardless of their location. Unborn children are children, without exception based on developmental stage, physical location, or any other ancillary characteristics. Justice Jay Mitchell wrote in Friday's majority <laughs> ruling by the all-Republican court. Like, at least a fucking fetus, you, you zoom in close enough and you're like, yeah, you can sort of vaguely resembles a, like, living fucking being. Like, what the fuck is this shit? It, the, what is that? You, absolutely fucking bizarre. You should have to describe what an embryo is and what it looks like before you can pass a fucking law. Also, like this. even the fetus stuff. What was it? Charlie Kirk, where they're like they tricked him into uh, yeah. identifying no, a dolphin that is, fetus. That is a human child. That's a fucking dolphin child. <sighs> uh, continues. This ruling is stating that a fertilized egg, which is a clump of cells, is now a person. It really puts into question the practice of IVF 
Barbara Kalara, CEO of Resolve, the National Infertility Association, told the Associated Press Tuesday, the group called the decision a terrifying development for the one in six people impacted by infertility who need in vitro fertilization. She said it raises questions for providers and patients, including if they can freeze future embryos created during fertility treatment, or if patients could ever donate or destroy unused embryos. Yeah, this is stupid. And yeah, like if you're an IVF center, like, and any minor routine mistake that's part of, just part of the business. The process of like, doing this. Yeah. Suddenly you're murdering children. And it's like, okay, well that's not worth the risk. Also, fuck we, that. We touch on it briefly in a second, but a, a lot of these in vitro fertilization attempts do fail. Yeah. And at that point, <laughs> who is criminally responsible right. for the death of that child? Right. They, yeah, it's, it's, it's just so dumb. This it's is so what happens dumb. when you, when you, everything that you believe is black and white and written in the Bible. Like, it, 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 yeah. Well, let's stop. Let's not even, let's not stop there. Anytime you jerk off, if not, if, yeah. if all, every, millions dead. if those millions of sperms aren't all latching onto an egg, you have just done the Holocaust. Technically, those are more alive down there than a frozen embryo. Yeah, they're moving. They're swimming. Yeah. Embryo not, not, not doing anything, just sitting there frozen. Sitting there frozen in yeah. the freezer. Anyway, just this week, following the ruling, multiple clinics, including the state's largest at the University of Alabama, they suspended their services. From NBC, less than a week after the Alabama Supreme Court ruled that embryos created through in vitro fertilization are considered children, two of the state's major IVF providers have suspended services as they consider the legal repercussions of the decision. The University of Alabama at Birmingham was first to announce the change on Wednesday. Then another practice, Alabama Fertility, posted a statement Thursday on social media saying it would put a hold on IVF treatments. We are contacting patients that will be affected today to find solutions for them, and we are working as hard as we can to alert our legislators as to the far-reaching negative impact of this ruling on the women of Alabama, Alabama Fertility said. Well, that's their problem. They're going to talk to their legislators and be like, this hurts women. And be like, oh, oh, good. Oh, good. I yeah. like to hurt women. Mission accomplished. We love hurting women here in Alabama. In the wake of these decisions and realizing how fucking stupid they are, some Republican lawmakers are admitting things might have gone a little bit too far and are now trying to backpedal a bit and protect IVF. So back some of whom I assume have children that were conceived this way. Be Statistically, yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, back to NPR. Six days after Alabama's Supreme Court ruled that frozen embryos are children, upending in vitro fertilization treatments, a Republican state senator said he plans to introduce a bill that would protect IVF statewide. State Senator Tim Melson, who chairs the Senate's Health Care Committee, said the bill would clarify that embryos are not viable unless they are implanted in a uterus. They just read the bill, and the way it's written, it's like if you're going to say from conception it's life, which I do believe it is, but it's not a viable life until it's implanted in the uterus, Melson said about Friday's ruling. Melson, who is also a medical doctor, says his proposal would make clear that a human egg that is fertilized in vitro shall be considered a potential life, but should not be legally considered a human life until it is implanted in a uterus. Okay, We're just splitting but, hairs here. This is like... But also, again, IVF fails a lot even after it's been implanted. Yeah. So what then? Exactly. I mean, these people are legitimately dumb as rocks or intentionally evil. Even if this is overturned to the point where it's not considered a child till implantation, if the pregnancy fails, which does happen, what are the options for the mother and the fertility clinic? Are they criminals? What the fuck is happening here? It is a nightmare, all caused by people who claim to be the ones who care about human life. What a country. There's so much going on to get angry at, and like, it's really hard to uh, break all that up in my brain because I'm constantly just getting shotgun blasted to the face with bad news, which is very frustrating. Yeah, and your beak spins all the way around yeah. your head. Yeah, bonk. And then you turn the other direction and pff, boom, Elmer beaks. Fudd's standing right there again. Yeah, fuck, it's wabbit season and duck season every fucking day, I hate it. Ugh. Anyway, we have more news coming up for you in just a second, including some clips and info coming out of the consistently chaotic and always upsetting Conservative Political Action Conference, mm -hmm. CPAC. But first, we've got to take a second to thank today's sponsor for supporting this show. Today's episode is sponsored by Factor. Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals make eating better every day easy. 
Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. You'll have over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. What are you waiting for? Get started today and have a feel-good week of meals ready to go. I've been especially recently loving their fish options. They got barramundi and salmon. And it is fantastic. Salmon, huh? Yeah, that's the way I pronounce it because mm. I sound really nice and uh, yes. better salmon. than everyone else. Salmon and barramundi. I'll take the salmon, please. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, upscale, see, there you go, options done easily. Factor's restaurant-quality meals are ready to heat and eat whenever you are in just two short minutes. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing 6 to 18 meals per week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. There's no prep, no mess, because Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. There's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. And they've also got snacks. They've got smoothies. They've got more. So you can discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day, like breakfast, midday bites, and plenty more where that came from. So get fed and support this show by heading to factormeals.com newsdump50 and using our code newsdump50 to get 50% off. That is code newsdump50 at factormeals.com newsdump50 to get 50% off. All right, back in the news now, and going back to the topic of American nightmares, it's CPAC time again, baby. I feel, yeah. you know, I feel like we were just at CPAC 2023, and here we are once again. CPAC is back, and yeah, that's the Conservative Political Action Con Convention. Yeah, this the Conservative Political Action Committee puts on the Conservative Political Action Convention. Yeah, they don't CPAC to... is an event and a group. Yeah, uh, it's now in full swing at the. Uh, Gaylord Convention Center in Maryland. That's accurate, but I'm sure that they don't like attending. Gaylord! It. Can't we pick a different convention center? Duh! <laughs> you know, it used to mean happy. Yeah. And when I was a kid, it was it was cool to be gay mm -hmm. because it meant something different. Yeah. We called those people something else that I can't see here at this convention because I'll get canceled. In this beautiful hall. I love the Gaylord Hotel. Mm -hmm. We should have more Gaylords. Yep. Um, so yeah, while we might have some more info and clips early next week after the multi-day conference plays out over the weekend. Opening day has had no shortage of absurdity, chaos, and of course, deeply unsettling moments to highlight. So let's start with the dumb ones first and then get to the legitimate calls for the death of democracy. Yeah. First off, in stark contrast with previous years, the event seems to be lacking in meaningful attendance, with some halls appearing to be more than half empty. Okay, that's good. Maybe. Yeah, yeah I think I, that's... I like that. That's a positive. Uh, they even ha had pictures of, like, the space outside of, like, the panels, and it's just completely empty. All right, all right. I'm liking this. Mm -hmm. uh, the rooms probably will fill up as the weekend progresses, but it appears as though people are losing interest in seeing Republicans and talking heads talk about anti-woke shit nonstop for four days straight. Yeah. And for those who did show up on the first day of the conference, and for those watching online, there were plenty of horrors on display. Like this, the January 6th insurrection pinball machine. This shit sucks. Uh, like, I'm like, listen, if you're gonna do this, put some fucking effort into this. This is the most, like, just janky, Basic reskin. Yeah, just yeah. like fucking clip art. Like, there's just no design to it. It looks cobbled together. It's like every time there's like a game on Steam that's controversial because it's topical or whatever, and you look at it and you're like, oh, they just, it's just like a, the bare minimum asset flip you've ever seen. Yeah. This is that. Yes. It, it looks like a terrible pinball game when compared to any modern pinball game or even a retro one. It, this, uh, this and this it's a terrible, terrible January 6th game compared to the one that already exists. Yeah. Storm the Capitol. Mm -hmm. But aside from that, I thought conservatives were constantly pushing the idea that January 6th wasn't an insurrection. Not only do they have a candidate who admits that it was an insurrection after his lawyers tried to argue that it wasn't, now they have an entire pinball cabinet that seems to glorify the events of January 6th. And, and that well, it's, that's it's intentional. Not, it's because, a shame that January 6th didn't happen, but if it did, that would have been sick. Yeah, it seems to fall on the lines of like... It's like how Holocaust denial hap works for a lot of white supremacists. They're like... Hitler did not do that, but it would have been so sick if Hitler did the thing. This is more did. like if they're talking in their own circles, they're like, yeah, it was pretty cool how we did that insurrection, right? And then yeah. like in normal yeah. life, they're like, oh, no, that wasn't an insurrection. Yeah, that was all, You're an all actually Antifa, crazy. Uh, you know, plants, crisis actors. Yeah, this is a fantasy pinball game. 
Uh, so I hope that they make up their minds one day. They won't. No. One thing that everyone in attendance at CPAC does seem to agree on, though, is that woke is bad. It's Yeah, my pronouns are kiss my ass. I bet every single speaker started their, their what's up, my name is blah, 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 and my pronouns are kiss my ass. That was Ted, Ted Theodore Cruz said that, yeah. I believe. Yeah, and then Roseanne d told the exact same joke at her uh, Fox mm -hmm. News exclusive comedy special. Yep. And yeah, you see it a lot with these people. Mm -hmm. they, they can't get enough of it. They have one joke and they are putting it to great use. Yeah. Not only did one of the first images during the event feature an anti-woke advertisement, but someone at the convention also, they had a booth selling anti-woke bottled water called Woke Tears Water. The water that identifies as transparent oh, wow. and is said to be made from pure melted snowflakes. This is gamer girl bath water for yeah. like political freaks. Yeah, and it's the same as like the ultra right conservative dad's anti woke beer. Yeah. Except it's even easier because they just had to print out a bunch of different labels. Instead of like actually doing a canning process, they can just take the other labels off and it's put new labels on. It's all fucking virtue signaling. Yes. It's wild. Yeah. And they're probably charging more for it because they know people are not going to actually drink it. They're going to put it right there next to their bowling trophies at home yeah. in the giant uh, workstation that their uh, yeah their PCs it's at. It's not water. It's actually it's woke tears. Uh, and but the, the reason you can see through it is because it's transparent. It's transparent. You know, you know, how I got those. I bottled them from my from my liberal son who yeah. only comes to visit my during Christmas. My liberal cuck son who's not allowed to use any of the pillows because they're my pillows. He sleeps in the yard. Where he belongs. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> as for the actual panels and speakers on CPAC's opening day, uh, let's check out some clips from the event. Here's Florida Representative Byron Donalds attacking wind turbines, just like his hero Donald Trump. But this time pointing out that they don't just kill birds, um, folks, they also kill human beings. These wind turbines, there have been more men and women who have died from wind turbines than nuclear power. That is a fact. More people have died from maintaining wind turbines than they've died from nuclear power plants. Okay, so first of all, yeah, I mean, we should definitely be utilizing nuclear power more. No argument there. It has been vilified far too long. But that's not what he's advocating for. He is advocating just against wind turbines by saying that they are deadly because there have unfortunately been deaths associated with maintaining them. Mm -hmm. But as many have pointed out since this statement started making the rounds, he should also maybe bring up how many deaths there have been as a result of our dependence on fossil fuels like oil, gas, and coal. I reckon that number would be a little bit higher. Yeah, not even from like the effects of just being around or breathing in that stuff, but like actual coal miners dying. Yeah, like the, the wind turbine deaths have been like technicians that got stuck on one when it gets caught on fire. It's like fucking, it's a really yeah, that sucks. sad way to go. Yeah. But like... Very isolated instance. You don't hear about that happening too much. Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, uh, like the oil derricks out in the ocean, one of the most dangerous places to work. Also, I mean, long history of coal miners dying, getting injured, yeah. having to get put on opioids, uh, having probably, black lung. Probably the deadliest resource extraction uh, yeah. job that you can do. And then the side effects from all of this stuff are literally choking the earth. So. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. But yeah, let's windmills. I, I, it's so, like, it's free electricity. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's just, it's just, you get free electricity just from the air moving. Like, how is that not the coolest fucking thing you've ever heard of? It's so Come funny because, like, my dad obviously is very conservative. Uh, he came to visit a month or two ago, and I took him way out east into the desert, and he loved the wind turbines. He thought they were cool as that hell. That was my first exposure to turbines was when we'd go to Palm Springs as a kid, and I was always like, oh my god, what? Like, they get, like, just electricity from the wind? For free? And, like, those, it's weird. Those were put in in, like, the 80s, maybe even earlier. Yeah. And because of that, they're they're not very efficient. And most of the time, most of them are shut down because they're very old. Yeah. But uh, it, was, it was interesting. It's like, well, so California invested, like, a shitload into, like, what looks like hundreds, maybe thousands of wind turbines back then, and then we all just forgot about it. Uh, and then uh, also, side note, the you know that giant solar array in Nevada yeah. near Vegas? Apparently, the entire Super Bowl festivities during that weekend were powered solely by that. Yeah, it's obvious. Like, <laughs> it's the, the it's free and it's the right there. The fucking sun is just beating down on this godforsaken place, like year round, like. 
use it. You, you capture the sun and you get free electricity. And that one kills birds too, uh, because they fly into the, because it's it's based on like reflective yeah. the stuff. How many birds they really got out there? Hey, ladies? come on, they'll learn. Don't go near that tower. Oh no, birds. Like yeah, unfortunate, yeah. but uh, we're, it's we're, bad. But like this is the a least lot more of their birds worry. are going to die from uh, climate change than flying yeah, directly yeah. into the yes. beam of this it, solar exactly. array. Exactly. Like the numbers, <laughs> the numbers of birds, like the bird population decline due to just like uh, also due to insect carbon, die off. Yeah, and like just, yeah. or just general like biome collapse yeah. is like alarming. Yeah. Uh, and personally, I think if a couple birds have to smash into like a fucking solar panel or a turbine, like that's a fair trade-off to save them from like just total collapse. The environmental collapse. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's also Senator Tommy Tuberville, who we oh, showed he's earlier. Back. <laughs> yeah, we showed him earlier seeming confused over whether or not his state's ruling on IVF is actually good or bad. Meh. In this clip, he repeats a completely false narrative about a stolen election in 2020 by claiming that people were stuffing ballot boxes for Joe Biden. Uh, we had a leader for four years and they ran him out. They ran him out and they're trying to keep him getting reelected this time. They stuffed a ballot box on him four years ago. We've got to get Donald Trump elected president of the United States. Okay, uh, and then here's a clip from Trump's spokesman, Michael Knowles, telling the crowd that once Trump is elected, they'll be getting rid of marriage equality. They can't really turn a couple of men or a couple of women or three men and a billy goat for that matter into a marriage. That's just not what marriage is. Marriage is and always has been the union of a man and a woman ordered toward the procreation and education of children. If you don't like that, don't blame me. <laughs> I didn't set the rules. On the stance of abortion, we're sure that we will have plenty more clips about this in the coming day, uh, but this ghoulish looking woman here was involved in a panel called Babies Are Us, and uh, she claims that the best moment of her life was when the Supreme Court ended Roe v. Wade. That's sad. Yeah. And one of the most amazing moments in my entire life, probably second only to my having my children and uh, marrying my husband, was standing on the steps of the Supreme Court and hearing the words that there's no constitutional right to abortion. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and if it weren't, if that weren't enough, here it is. Here's Jack Prilosek saying all the quiet parts out loud and showing everyone in person or watching online the full intentions of the Republican Party. All right, welcome. Welcome, I just wanted to say, look, welcome to the end of democracy. <laughs> we are here to overthrow it completely. We didn't get all the way there on January 6th, but we will, we, we will endeavor to, oh, to get rid of it and replace it with, with this right here. We'll replace it with this right, right. here. Amen. And uh, side note, when he says they're going to replace democracy with this right here, he's holding up a crucifix. This man used to... Uh, it's crazy how far he's come because this man's entire naval career was like just holding a piss cup underneath dudes' dicks to check mm -hmm. for like marijuana. Use. That's why he's so damn mad. Getting piss all over his arms and shit. Yeah. Sometimes drinking it when no one's looking. Just, yeah. Just to see what it tastes it's like. It's healthy and I like the taste. So yeah, he has come a long way. Great job, Jack Prilosek. Yes. Oh, speaking of Daily Wire, apparently they like deleted any traces of that weird baby plush toy. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Matt Walsh uh, diaper fetish toy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they admit that that's weird. Yeah. By getting rid of it, that's admitting that it's or very strange. Or it's gone because it's sold out. So many people wanted it. Just like the Trump shoes, yeah. which uh, I didn't include it in here because I kind of told the, the story yesterday. But uh, uh, yeah, you could find all these on eBay getting bit up like crazy. And then you would go to the details and it's like, this is just a photo yeah, of the shoe. That's very funny. Or they are selling the pre-sale of the shoe, claiming that they have locked it in. But also what I found strange on the website is that it is you know, listed as sold out. I don't think they were ever for sale. I think it was immediately sold out. Because there's like size 15s that are like completely sold out. Yeah. Like, who, who the fuck is buying these? But, Moving anyways. on from the death of democracy to the death of online journalism. It looks like Vice is actually legitimately shutting down, laying off hundreds of employees and will no longer be publishing articles on their website. This is wild and it sucks. It's, it sucks. It's horrible. In fact, rumors are flying as to whether or not any past articles will even be available on their website, meaning the entirety of Vice's digital footprint uh, going back decades could just vanish at any point in the near future. Mm -hmm. And while we're not entirely sure about what will happen to their back catalog, here's what's confirmed thanks to a write-up in the Daily Beast. 
The ownership group that bought Vice Media out of bankruptcy last year is preparing to eliminate the bulk of the once colossal digital publisher's staff over the next few days, Vice CEO Bruce Dixon announced on Thursday. He also revealed that the company will fully transition to a studio model and no longer publish its digital content on Vice Media's flagship website. Additionally, Dixon said ownership is in advanced talks to sell the entertainment website Refinery29. News of the hundreds of layoffs comes just hours after rumors of the site's shuttering, which the company's executives did not immediately address, gripped Vice's editorial staff. After suffering yearly layoffs and losses, Vice filed for bankruptcy last year and was subsequently purchased by private equity firm Fortress Investment Group. Rather than reinvest in the company, Fortress has decided to jump aboard the growing trend across digital media of instituting deep and sweeping cuts. Which was probably the intention. They probably bought this to shut it down because... Yeah, they, you, strip someone, it, you strip it for parts. A, an investment group, uh, specifically one called Fortress Investment Group, you don't, probably has no... Uh, they probably don't want this type of journalism to exist. Yeah, and uh, Even if they did, you don't buy a online media organization in 2023 because you want to make money. No. Ugh. So, yeah, it's uh, it's unfortunate. And yeah. um, hopefully, I mean, like a lot of the motherboard people have moved on to 404 Media, which is uh, great. Still yeah. doing great Fantastic. work. Fantastic. Go so, sign up for them. I'm hoping to see, uh, you know, more of the, the talented people from Vice end up elsewhere where maybe they aren't uh, under just this brutal management style where uh, if we're not making insane profits, then everything's lost and we got to shut this whole thing down and just delete. Yeah. Also not making extreme, extremely high profits because you're taking on r insane risky gambles every part of the way because yeah. of management needing to do a bunch of different things to please everyone else. Yeah. So it's fucked up. Like it's uh, this, the, the trajectory of Vice over the last 25 years is, like, insane. It was just, like, local fucking newspaper in Montreal, and then it became this national sort of uh, free newspaper you got in record stores yeah. and coffee shops, mm -hmm. and then it became, like, a website, and then it spun off into documentaries and TV shows and, like, actual hard-hitting journalism. Yeah. And now it's fucking dead. Yep. Uh, but from news that affects everyone in a negative way to news that affects... One guy in particular. Oh, yeah, the like Lord that. said, fuck that guy in particular. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, he thought, he thought that he had won the lottery. Yeah, you thought. Yeah. Only for the Sucker. lottery to claim that actually they screwed up and they published the wrong numbers. Oopsie daisy. You get nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, he got, yeah, nothing. Just a nice, a nice fuck Better you. luck next week. Loser. <laughs> <laughs> Keep buying those tickets, loser. <laughs> a guy named John Cheeks from Washington. <laughs> he got those cheeks clapped. Come on, he's already having a bad month. Don't make fun of his name. A guy named John Cheeks from Washington, D.C. hit the jackpot last month, winning an estimated $340 million on the Powerball. After, and after days of presumably fantasizing about how all of his dreams had just come true, and almost certainly protecting that ticket like his life depended on it, he went down to the local lottery office and then presented it, only for the staff to tell him that, uh, actually, there was a glitch. You should probably just throw that ticket away. Sorry. No, you don't understand. I just told everyone I know to go fuck themselves. <laughs> I quit my job. <laughs> I, I, told, I, I, I told everyone to suck my dick and fucking lose my number, because I'm rich, I walked bitch. into my boss's office. I said, that's the last time you clap these cheeks, and then I pissed on his desk. So you're telling me I have to go back and apologize? Is this fucked? The, so the numbers were on the ticket? The numbers, his ticket matched the numbers that were published on the website. And they said there was a glitch with the website. So, sorry, loser. Go home. I mean, uh, they should give him a little bit of money. <laughs> well, they might have to because he decided <laughs> to lawyer up <laughs> yeah. instead of just leaving. And he's now suing the lottery. Here's the BBC with more. According to court documents, Powerball and a lottery contractor, the DC-based Teodi Enterprises, claim the confusion arose from a technical error. In a court filing, a Teodi employee said that on 6th of January 2023, the day Mr. Cheeks bought his ticket, a quality assurance team was running tests on the website. On that day, a set of test Powerball numbers, which matched Mr. Cheeks' numbers, was posted on the website accidentally, according to court documents. Those numbers remained online for three days. Okay, fuck it, three days? <laughs> yeah. Until the 9th of January. 
The numbers online did not match the numbers that were drawn at the last lottery draw, according to the Teodi employee. Three days? I thought it was like, oh, it, it was, we were just testing, we... Three days? This, no, this, you this, give this man his money. <laughs> this might be one of the first people that's like, I had my own January 6th. Because yeah, that's no. when the numbers were posted or uh, posted on the website. This would crush my fucking soul. Yeah, probably because you're like, I mean, wrongly, because as we've seen throughout uh, history, people who win the lottery are generally less happy yeah, and have their own problems. It doesn't solve your problems. Yeah. But if the theory of you winning the lottery, it kind of washes away any financial problems that you have. Like anything that you've been struggling with for years or debts that you have, uh, all that is gone. It's a weight lifted off your shoulders. And then to find out that like, Oh, sorry. Yeah, the website was wrong. Sorry. And yeah, it makes sense. Not everyone's watching the actual balls being called on television anymore. What is this, the 1970s? In fact, we couldn't even tell you when that shit happens or like on what channel. How does that work? I'm assuming... Well, that's, that's what the website's for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so even if I saw it on like uh, the local channels... I'd be like, wait, I'm going to go verify yeah, this Yeah, let me just go check the website and make sure that the fucking news lady's not bullshitting me yeah, right now. Yeah, making sure she didn't turn a six into yeah. a nine or something like that. <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of people rely entirely on the lottery website, and that indicated that he had won $340 million. <laughs> but I guess not. Sorry. The uh, reporting continues. Mr. Cheeks is now suing on eight separate counts, including breach of contract, negligence, infliction of emotional distress, and fraud. Mr. Cheeks' lawyer, Richard Evans, said in court documents that because the winning numbers matched Mr. Cheeks' numbers, he is entitled to the entire jackpot. Otherwise, Mr. Evans said, Mr. Cheeks is entitled to damages for the gross negligence of the lottery in posting erroneous lottery numbers. This lawsuit raises critical questions about the integrity and accountability of lottery operations and the safeguards, or lack thereof, against the type of errors that Powerball and the DC lottery contend occurred in this case. Mr. Evans told the BBC in a statement, This is not merely about numbers on a website. It's about the reliability of institutions that promise life-changing opportunities while heavily profiting in the process, he said. Mr. Cheeks told the BBC that he is hopeful. I know the justice system will prevail, he said, adding that the lottery winnings would have been life-changing for him and his family. If he wins, he plans to open a home trust bank meant to assist aspiring homeowners. It's always the ones with the best intentions that get screwed over. Yeah. If I win, I'm planning on buying the biggest boat they sell down at the boat thing. Here's your reward. And I'm putting that shit on cinder blocks in my yard 360 days out of the year. And nobody's going to tell me that I can't do that. <laughs> and finally today, Joe Biden's dog, Commander, has a new kill count to be proud of. Well, no one died. Yep. But Commander has continued to attack members of Biden's staff, setting his sights exclusively on members of the Secret Service. <laughs> Which is hilarious because at this point, there's no hiding the fact that Joe Biden's dog fucking hates cops in particular. And he can smell them a mile away because he is specifically choosing to almost exclusively bite members of law enforcement. Commander isn't alone in this battle either because Biden's other dog has also gotten into some trouble for biting Secret Service members. Yeah. Both of his dogs, they, they said, all cops are bastards. <laughs> Which translates to all cops are bastards, yeah. ACAP. <laughs> and that includes the Secret Service. They might be fancy cops, but they're cops. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Commander in particular has seemingly turned this into a career because new reporting states that he's bitten members of the Secret Service on 24 separate occasions. He can't be stopped. Here's CNN with more. Commander Biden. <laughs> I love that they named him the last name. Commander Biden, President Joe Biden's family dog, bit U.S. Secret Service personnel in at least 24 incidents at the White House and other locations, according to new internal USSS documents obtained by CNN. The recent dog bites have challenged us to adjust our operational tactics when Commander is present. Please give lots of room, an unnamed assistant special agent in charge of USSS Presidential Protective Division wrote to their team in a June 2023 email warning that agents must be creative to ensure our own personal safety. <laughs> The documented incidents included members of the Secret Service's Uniform Division, members of the President's Protective Detail, and other USSS officials. They took place inside and outside of the White House residence, but also at Biden family homes in Wilmington and Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, at Camp David, and in Nantucket, Massachusetts, where the first family spends the Thanksgiving holiday. A source close to the Biden family told CNN that the Biden family feels awful <laughs> and has been heartbroken over the spate of biting incidents. He's actually a really good dog. 
They've been heartbroken over this. They've apologized to those who have been bitten, taken flowers to some. They feel awful. I mean, we said this before, but and a lot of people have said this, but, um, you know, most times a cop and a dog, the cop's going to win. That dog even looks at the cop the wrong way. It's blap, blap, blap. This is the one time. They love shooting dogs, police. They get off on it. It's, it's, it's a sexual kink for all members of law enforcement, every yeah. single one of them. So this is the one situation where they can't. They can't do anything. Shoot the dog and uh, commander and the other one. They are, uh, on behalf of all other dogs, yeah. the fallen, they are, uh, you know, turning the tables. Very similar to how orcas, being protected, are sticking up for the rest of the marine community. Yeah. Not the ura Marines, but, you know, the fish and other aquatic mammals. Not seals, though. They're not part of the community. We, <laughs> we fucking kill them. We toss them yeah, around yeah. until their bones break. Yes. No respect for them, but... Yeah. Uh, we don't claim them. No. Uh, but those are some... dogs with fins. <laughs> Some unity across animals uh, sticking up for everyone else with retribution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I, I, I've been playing a ton of Helldivers like everyone else in the world. Uh, great game. I don't recommend it, though, because the servers are still having issues, so don't Ooh. buy it. Do it's not buy. It's actually really fun. Uh, and we, I, I went on uh, the Insurgents podcast with Rob Rousseau and Jordan Yule. Ool, whatever. Uh, this week, so check out that podcast. We talk about Helldivers and the absurd commentary on Starship Troopers the past week because of the popularity of Helldivers. Um, so yeah, we talk about that and more. Uh, I'll leave a link to the Insurgents podcast below. But when you're done with that, make sure you watch our most recent videos. We got how uh, uh, Tech News Day about how AI video is, well, it's doing something. It's, it exists. It exists and it is not helping things. Uh, we also have a video from earlier in the week about those Trump shoes. Check both of those out, and we'll be back with Weekly Weird News. Don't forget to like the video. Come on. I almost forgot. Yeah, like make up, it. Make up for me almost forgetting by liking the video you right have to now. to like the... They did it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll see you soon. Bye.